Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake, and in today's Illustrator tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Pathfinder tool to make some interesting objects and shapes. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and start with something really simple. We're going to use the Ellipse tool, and we're going to create a circle here holding Shift. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. And we're going to kind of make a gear shape. So what we're going to do initially is we're going to go ahead and do uh, a rectangle here. And we're going to align these. So we're going to select both of them. We're going to go over to our align panel and align to center. Uh, we've got that. Okay. So let's go ahead and select this. Hold down Shift and Alt. And we'll use our uh, smart guides to kind of help us out here. Uh, that worked out well. We're going to hold Alt and we're going to rotate from the corner. Oh, wait. Sorry. Yeah. We're going to hold down Alt again. Space over. And then we'll space back, rotate. And so we've got that going on now. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do that again. And this time we'll rotate it at a 45 degree angle. And then we'll right click. We'll hit transform. Reflect. Copy. And that makes another one. So, okay, now we've got all of the basic parts for our gear here. All right. So we've got an eight pointed gear. And what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these. We're going to go to our Pathfinder and we're going to hit Unite. And that's going to make all of these now a singular shape. So now if I select this and I hit any of these colors, it'll change color accordingly. And uh, that works out really well for us. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to cut a circle out of this. So we're going to go to our lips tool, go to the center here. Thank you for our smart guides. And we're going to create a circle. Let's go ahead and make that uh, all white on the inside so that we can just differentiate it. And I'm going to bring up the grid background so that when I uh, cut this out, you can see it. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select this, go back to our line, make sure that it's centered. All right, so now that's uh, that should be centered now. At least I think it is. All right, so with both of these selected, we're going to go to Pathfinder, and we're going to go to the second one, which is minus front. And then you can see that that actually cut out our entire shape there. So now we have this gear, and if we put something underneath it, like, you know, we just put another circle here, you can see that, you know, it's actually transparent and that it goes underneath there. So that's working out. So that was pretty simple, but there are some other things that you can do with the uh, Pathfinder tool. So we're just going to take this and plop it over in our corner over there so that you can see that. Another thing that you're going to want to do with the Pathfinder tool is uh, for especially if you're doing stuff with logos is there's a, a portion of the tool called divide. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, take the pencil tool. We're going to make uh, a stroke here. And let's go ahead and make this uh, large enough stroke. And if you've ever wondered how um, people make these um, certain logo shapes, uh, I'm going to show you kind of how that's done. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to Object, and we're going to go to Expand. And so now that's a complete shape all by itself. So now we're going to select this, and we're going to go to Pathfinder Divide. All right, so now that we've divided this, we can go ahead and we can select these um, fill strokes that we did, and we can delete them. Whoops. So those are all gone, and now we can just click on this, and we can just you know move the individual pieces. And you can do that with uh, either the direct selection tool, or you can double click on it into the group. And now you can do all kinds of things and manipulate this shape. So that's the you know divide tool. 
So if you've ever wondered how people do that kind of thing and how you get like a Pepsi style logo, that's how you do that. And now that we have this, these are all individual shapes. So if we wanted to, we can go ahead and we can manipulate them further by um, selecting a different color value for them. So in this case, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to just kind of make that. So this is our like, you know, faux Pepsi style kind of logo. And again, you can do anything you want with this now and you can manipulate it to your heart's content. You can make these things closer. You can break them apart. You can do whatever you want with them. And then as a group, you can move that around, select it, etc. So that's how you use uh, the divide tool. The next two tools I'm going to cover are a little weird. Uh, they're the intersect and exclude tool. So the intersect tool is just really kind of weird, um, but I'm going to show you how it works anyway. And let's go ahead and make a stroke here. And this could work out um, depending on how you wanted to do it. You can go ahead and you can use this and we'll just make a copy of our shape here uh, for argument's sake. So what we're going to do is the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to select these two strokes and we're going to have to go to object and we're going to have to expand them. So we're going to do that. Now that they're individual overlapping shapes of their own. We can use the intersect tool to select two of them at a time. And we do that. And then we use copy and paste in place. We'll push this to the back. And you can do that. And you can do that with right click, arrange, send to back when you're doing that. As for the paste command, I was just using paste in place, which is uh, shift command, alt V, uh, control, shift, alt V for those of you on Windows. And I'm just going to repeat the process here. Use exclude again. And then we just send this to the back. And uh, the reason you would do this is um, it's somewhat obvious for uh, what you would use this for. This would, again, possibly be something you're doing for a logo. The other thing is you could make interesting shapes like this uh, for uh, tennis balls, which is kind of what I've got going on here. You could do it uh, with uh, Pokeballs. You can do just all kinds of just interesting stuff and make uh, different objects and logos. Um, you could even make this into uh, Haru from uh, Gundam if you wanted to. And I'll actually just um, do that real quick because that's kind of an interesting idea. So I'm just going to use the ellipse tool. And then I'm going to align that to center. And I've kind of made a Haru from uh, Gundam now. So that's kind of cool. So you can just make mascots and you can do different things if you use that tool correctly. So uh, another one we're going to use in a similar fashion is going to be uh, another portion of the Pathfinder tool called Exclude. Exclude is something that I would use kind of if I was doing um, like Olympic rings or if I was doing like uh, gold power rings from Sonic or something like that. Uh, that's kind of how I would use it. Um, you know, however you're going to use it is fine. I'm going to go to Object, Expand. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to hold Alt and Shift and I'm going to make some interlocking rings here, similar to what you would do for like uh, the Olympic gold rings. And in this case, I'm going to make this one um, a different color. And then I'm going to make this one another different color. So you can see what's going on here. And then I hit exclude. And you can see the kind of interesting shape that that ends up making. But I can now take each of these things here and I could make them uh, different colors. That's the cool thing. So we exclude these areas that they overlap in are um, the areas that get cut off. So these overlapping intersecting areas are what gets cut off. And that's really just interesting because it creates, you know, all these different options for you. But what I could do is I could do um, something like this. And I'll just grab the color from in here. And I'm using the direct selection tool, if you didn't notice for this, and the eyedropper tool.
So that's just kind of the way that you would end up using that. So you can do, again, all kinds of different interesting things as far as logos go by doing some of these simple tricks using the Pathfinder tool. Now these other versions of the Pathfinder tool are really just similar. They're inverted versions of these other tools and you can just do the opposite or the same thing with those by holding down Alt when you use the tool. So it's uh, very similar to how Photoshop masking works in that regard. So these are the actual Pathfinder tools that you will use when you're doing Adobe Illustrator and this is how you make some very cool and different interesting types of objects using Pathfinder in Adobe Illustrator and how all that stuff actually works. So um, I hope you guys were able to follow along with this. If you have questions about the uh, Pathfinder tools and how to use them, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. I'll try and explain it uh, further if you were unable to follow along with this for some reason. But again, there's just all kinds of things to be done with this and this was really basic. And one thing I'm gonna show you just really quick because I can is um, just something interesting you could do with like the star tool. Just as an example, so we're not using super, super basic shapes. Um, you can go ahead and you can use the Pathfinder tool and in the case of this star tool, what we're going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this star. And let's make it white so we can see that. I'm going to put it on the inside and bring it to the front here. And you kind of can see already where I'm going with this. So I could go ahead and I could do minus front from this and that cuts out that star. And now it's this um, interesting complex shape that, you know, does that. So that's pretty cool. But you can do this with um, fonts too. Once you convert them to smart objects, you can actually combine uh, shapes with fonts. Um, let's use a primary example. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a T in here. Make this bigger. Uh, let's convert this to avant garde G bold. Whoops. And I'm going to uh, convert it to being the same color. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this T to uh, create outlines. So now it's a vector shape. Uh, and Let's see. Now that it's a vector shape, let's make it a little bigger. And kind of put it in the context of this image as if we were making a logo and we'll align it to be centered here. So, okay, this already looks like it's one shape, but it's not. Um, but if I use the Pathfinder tool, I can combine this and now it is, and that's kind of how you would do that for a logo. And now if I change their color, they become the same. So I can do that, or I can add a gradient to them and I can make them um, that. So again, that's a practical example of how you might go about um, combining the Pathfinder tools with shapes and fonts to make all kinds of diff different interesting shapes and objects. So again, I hope you guys really learned uh, something useful for this. I hope you understand the basics of using the Pathfinder and shape tools in Illustrator. Um, you know, again, if you have any questions, leave that in the comment section below. Let me know what Adobe Illustrator uh, tutorials you want me to do going forward, and I'll try and knock those out for you. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other Adobe tutorials on the channel. And as always, you guys, thanks for watching.